Hi friends, Miles here and it's January again. So why not talk a little bit about gas, shall we? I think the gear acquisition syndrome is very commonly known across uh, music and synth heads. And today I want to share with you my personal approach on it and hope that you can take something away from it. And later in the video, we'll also have a special guest, but uh, more on that later. Quick disclaimer that this video might not be for everyone. If you're an absolutely synth acquirer, like it's your biggest passion to buy synths, to resell them, to get new ones, to do that. And if it makes you happy, that's totally fine. No bad blood, everything cool. But this video is more for people like me who really um, yeah, see gas as a problem for their creativity. Because when you get new gear, you need to go learn new stuff and finally might come to the thought of, uh, okay, you don't actually need the gear that you have um, and it will not result in making better music. Let me tell you my own story of avoiding gas. I started making music with Ableton Live in 2017 and like every beginner I totally fell for all the tutorials out there and all the people trying to sell you stuff. I believed in the things that there someone said you really need these equalizers to make your sound better, you need this compressor to make um, yeah, your vocals better, you need this particular synthesizer to make your music sound like XYZ artist. And um, yeah, I have to say I totally fell for that trap of when you buy this, you will become a better producer. And don't get me wrong, I really learned a lot in this time by watching videos and learning from other people and their approach. But I always had this thought in my head that I need more to become better. I need more plugins to become better. I need more, um, yeah, basically also outboard synthesizers to uh, have better sounds. I need more of the gear that person X is using to achieve the sound that person X is using and never really thought about, okay, how can I maximize the outcome with using just the gear that I have. And my creativity actually really suffered from that and I wasn't really productive in that time. So in 2020, after a long and careful um, decision process, I decided to get the Electron Digitone. I wanted to get it as my first outboard um, synthesizer to complement my workflow in Ableton and yeah, to just have um, a first FM synthesizer and dive deeper into um, yeah, FM synthesis basically. I very quickly realized that the Digitone is an amazing standalone synthesizer and groove box and that you can make full tracks on just this thing. And this fascinated me so much that I, for about one year, only made music using the Electron Digitone. And the thing is that just working with this one box was a huge creativity booster. I really learned in depth on how to use that box, how to maximize it, how to deal with the limitations that this box have, um, has, and uh, to get some uh, creative ways around these limitations and to push my jams further and further and further with every piece of music that I wrote using just the Digitone. So in this time, I came from struggling with barely releasing any projects to writing and releasing a full EP within months. And um, yeah, it was just that I needed this kind of limitation from the Electron Digitone and to not couple it with any other devices. And I can tell you that it was a big cure for my desire of needing new gear because for one year I just, when whenever I thought, okay, what next piece of gear I might use or might want, I just came back to the Digitone and realized this is the thing I'm making music with and I will stick to it. And um, yeah, that was actually a great experience for me and totally changed my way of thinking about making music. And this brought me to the point where I said to myself, I will just buy gear that I really need that serves a specific purpose in my setup and that I definitely need to complete the setup that I have. And I stick to that till today. But this is just my own approach. And I thought, why not bring someone here on the channel that has a ton of experience making music and also a ton of experience when it comes to this topic, like my man, Mr. Ed Rollo. 
Now, for those of you who don't know Ed, he's an amazing educator and musician with releases in the Beatport Top 10. And yeah, he's just a very fun guy. He makes great YouTube videos and um, he's just an awesome person um, to connect with and talk about music. And um, yeah, I linked basically um, all of his channels down in the video description. You will also find him linked in the um, in the description there. And um, yeah, make sure to check out his channel. Uh, stuff we are working on some projects together and i can tell you it's a ton of fun so let's hear what our man has to say i mean seriously how have i not made a video about this already miles thanks for bringing me on man this is going to be a good one there's a great quote that i think can be applied to all areas of life which is Hard things, easy life, easy things, hard life. With gear acquisition, we're doing the easy things. Buying gear is fucking simple and it feels good. It's a pleasurable activity. But pleasurable things, filling up your tank with pleasurable activities doesn't bring happiness. It brings this momentary fleeting level of pleasure where it feels kind of good in the moment, but then it really starts to fade when the tough realities set in of the road that we have ahead of us to actually put this gear into practice and make some fucking music with it. I've been down the road of gear acquisition time and time again in times when I had no idea what I was doing in the studio. I wasn't treating things professionally. I was a total amateur and I had no idea what it took to actually make and finish a piece of music that was any good. This is what leads people to gear acquisition because we need to feel some sense of accomplishment in the studio, whatever that looks like. Whether it's rearranging all the gear that we have in the studio, doing a tidy up of our cables, taking a sweet pic for Instagram, making sure that we have perfect studio lighting with a pot plant in the corner. I mean, there are so many things that we distract ourselves with to make us feel like we're actually making progress with our music, whereas we're just procrastinating, putting all of our energy into the wrong areas. Once I caught myself in the act of actually acquiring too much gear, I stopped. I realized that I needed to have a certain level of equipment to do the gig that I do. And I realized the irony here, sitting in a studio surrounded by gear, but every single tool that I have in here has a purpose. It has a clear function to allow me to do the things that I do. I use everything in here, every single instrument, every single piece of gear. And if I don't, I get rid of it. But we all succumb to the bullshit out there and the people who are trying to sell us things, the gear reviews, unboxing videos. I mean, that stuff is addictive. But think about who's making gear reviews and unboxing videos. It's companies who sell this gear or content creators who've been paid to review it. And that link in the description to get a discount on that product, that's not a discount code. That's a commission code, allowing that content creator to keep selling you more shit that you don't need. So if you're caught in this trap of buying more gear and acquiring more stuff and binge watching tutorials and product reviews and whatever the fuck, then just think about doing the hard stuff. Think about those things that you aren't doing that's going to get you across the line. Learn the gear that you already have. This is going to give you a huge leg up in your studio sessions because you're going to know the gear and know how to use it. You're going to be able to get the sounds out of it that you want. Have your studio set up and ready to go so that you can get to the sounds as quickly as possible. Time in the studio is precious. Learn some basic fundamental music theory, synthesis and sound design so that when you're sat in front of a new modular synthesizer, you know how to fucking use it. I honestly can't remember the last time I bought a piece of gear. When you realize that all the gear you have in front of you is more than enough, your music making sessions are so much more fulfilling. But that's all for me today. Keep creating. Bye for now. Back to you, Miles. Thanks so much, Ed, for putting the inconvenient truth out there and nailing it. And yeah, like I said, if you want to check more of Ed's content, you will find all links down in the description. And Ed's part was actually the perfect transition on some hands-on tips on how to actually fight gas. Tip number one, I already mentioned it, but it can't be emphasized enough. Try to stick to the instruments that you already have. 
Try to come up with your own workflows with the gear. Try to really maximize it and maybe use it in a purpose that it's not initially made for. Um, and yeah, you will see that you will get some very great results from that and new creative um, uh, perspectives basically on how you can better um, approach your project. Tip number two, also very straightforward, make music instead of looking at the gear that you don't own. Ed mentioned that already also in his part, but I think it can't be emphasized enough. Focus on the projects that you have with the gear that you have and try really to maximize the outcome. And you will be surprised how rewarding that actually can be to put in the work, get into your synthesizers, learn them better and really see how your music making uh, workflow improves. Tip number three, if you watch gear videos and I think we all can't make ourselves free from that and we all do, which is totally fine. Maybe change a little bit of the perspective. Don't think, ah, oh, I really need this piece of gear that person X is presenting in his video to achieve a specific sound. Try more to think, how can I achieve the sounds that this machine does with the things that I already own? This totally changed my way on looking at gear and you will be surprised how many cool things you will discover in your gear and how you can make best use of it. And if you're watching tutorials, try to watch them about gear that you already own. Because creative tips from other people can actually be something very valuable that can help you to get a new perspective on the gear that you own and maybe get some new sounds of it and really have a deep dive into the gear. Try to get um, some workflow tips from people that already have the gear that you also own or have a similar workflow than you might not necessarily be um, the, the same gear. But it can also be a similar workflow and then you can think okay how can I approach what this person is doing to my own workflow and improve it and tip number four is try new approaches on learning about making music for example I recently read a book about electronic music production and it really helped me to um, get some new ideas for my own workflow I did it um, during a travel and it was quite nice actually to read a book I rarely do that I have to say at least about electronic music production um, but it was really cool to do that and to get some new ideas from it and in this example as well I thought okay how can I apply the techniques in this book to the setup that I already have here at home and how can I actually use the synthesizers that I have um, so that I can get some creative outcomes as they are uh, written in the book. Questions like that automatically exclude thoughts about gear that you don't own, but rather get you more engaged with the things that you do already own. And this is something that really helps me when I try to avoid guess. So if there's one thing to take away from this video, it might be this. Try to think more about the things that you already own and get engaged with them instead of thinking about which piece of music or which piece of gear I might be buying next because it automatically changes your way on how you look at the things that you already own and really gets you engaged with it. And I think this is something that's really important when it comes to um, creativity and getting creative with the gear that you have at hand. And the best thing about it, you will actually make huge improvements with the gear that you already have. You will learn how to use it in depth. You will really learn how to put it in, um, in yeah, best in place for the music uh, that you want to make. And you will learn a ton about music in general as well this way. So um, yeah, there's also a big plus like that. And yeah, that actually um, was it from me. So I would like to hear your thoughts on gas. What are your ways to approach it? What are um, your ways of um, dealing with it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to discuss. And uh, thanks again to our lovely man, Ed, for his appearance here on the channel. And yeah, um, that's it from me. Enjoy Jamuri, keep jamming, and see you in the next one. Peace.